Hey guys, my name is Emily. My name is Amanda. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. This video is part number two of our ladies only fish camp. We're super excited to bring you guys along in this video. We hope you enjoyed part one, and if you missed it, go back and check it out. We fished with 12 ladies for two full, I mean, these were like nine, 10 hour days straight. And we went over so many tips and techniques, and this was all a how to fish. It was an amazing time. We had, we fished with two conks, the two conks boats. We fished with Captain Cam, Captain Roger. And on this, you might notice something a little bit different, but we have a camera guy. We have our good friend, Mikey, he has his own company, and we were so glad to have him there because we really wanted to make sure we could focus on the ladies, but we also wanted you guys to be learning. So literally, this is a virtual camp for you guys. It is, you guys are gonna learn with us. Something unique about day two is that we actually swapped boats. So the first day, I had my group of ladies with Captain Cam, and Amanda had hers with Captain Roger. And the second day, we swapped. Amanda took her group with Captain Cam because we wanted the ladies to experience both boats, both captains, and really get a ver versatile experience. Just like the first day, on the second day, we went to pull a pinfish trap. This is the first thing we did because we needed bait to get out to the gulf. The gulf is a completely different fishery from the reef. So to start, we taught them about the different anchors. The reef, we were using rock anchors. The gulf, we were using Danforth anchors, which dig into the sand because the gulf is a very sandy and mushy bottom. So it was very important. The first thing we had to do was teach them how to anchor on their spot. So today we're gonna fish with the fortress anchor because we're gonna be fishing in sand and grass and the structure's gonna be behind us, but there's no like rock or something for the anchor to grab. So this anchor can slide like right into the mud perfectly for us and keep our boat. So Cam's gonna catch our drift and he'll bring us up ahead of the spot. We'll throw our anchor and then we'll drift back to our wreck, which it is a big structure. There is a wreck there, but we wanna be in front of it. So that's how we're gonna use this anchor. We'll use the knocker rigs and we can also use the snapper jigs as well. Yeah, when we use the knocker rigs, I would almost use your chunks of ballyhoo, like cut up a piece of ballyhoo. Okay. Um, or you can use pinfish, but try to find the small ones. Use the small ones, yeah. In the bay, the currents can get crazy. Back there, you get such strong tides because there's a lot of water moving, and the, today, the wind was going against the tide. So it was really hard. We were fishing side sea for most of the day, and so we spent some time explaining to the girls on catching their drift, and specifically on choosing if they wanted to keep their GPS north up, course up, or heading up, and my personal preference is always to keep it north up when you're trying to find a drift. I prefer to use north up because north up is your, basically your entire screen is going to be stable and then your boat is gonna move. So if you're traveling south, you're traveling to the bottom of the screen. If you're traveling north, you're traveling up towards the screen. And that's helpful when you're finding your drift because your screen is still and only your boat's moving. Whereas if you have it on like, uh, what's it? Course up. course up or something, your screen's gonna be doing this. So it's gonna be a lot harder to see your drift because your screen's moving and you're off right here. And then the screen's doing this. So if you're trying to find a drift, north up is really helpful. But when it comes to like running to a location or something, it's, if north up is confusing because it's hard to learn at first, because um, if you're traveling south, everything's kind of backwards, then I would have it on course up. So if this is our spot and we drift down this way, we know that we need to anchor up here. So. Once we have our drift, we know if we're drifting, let's say this is, what is it? Southwest of our spot, we need to go northeast of it to make sure we land on top of it. So we'll come up to our spot and then we'll go past it. Once we're at it, we'll drop the anchor, drift back to it, and then tie off, hopefully within 100 feet of it. I mean, out here you wanna be, I would wanna be within 20 feet of it. But out of the, out of the out reef, within 50 right. feet would be good too. How far do I have to just as long as you get over the side of the boat. Okay. Just, <laughs> like you can reach, you don't have to throw. You can just like. Just standing <laughs> Good, camps, okay, ready? Do it on three. One, two, three. There you go. Literally the first fish that we caught was a Goliath grouper, which it just made the entire day because I mean, honestly, that was really the goal was to catch a Goliath grouper. It happened in the first 
five minutes. The ladies have their baits in the water. All of a sudden, their rods were bent over and we had a Goliath grouper on and the ladies tag team this. They traded off rods. They helped each other get this Goliath grouper up. It was such a great experience for all of them to get their Goliath grouper. They were able to do it on their knocker rigs, which we taught them how to do their knocker rigs and how to bait it. So once again, on a Goliath grouper, which pulls like crazy, their knots were holding up. Ready? We're releasing our Goliath grouper. You can pull back on that. Drop down a little more, keep pulling. It'll open up and give it a little shake. There you go. Knees down. <laughs> nice job. So that's what you're basically gonna be fishing for as well. So that's what the knocker rigs are looking for. So we'll get, that was so fast, I didn't even get a chance to get all you ladies set up, but we'll get some more knocker rigs out. Oh yeah. A really common catch out in the Gulf is sharks. They're everywhere out there, they're abundant. So if you want action and you want to bend rods, I would head out to the Gulf. We caught a lot of bonnet head sharks today, actually. Which I thought was funny because we didn't catch any. We caught nurse sharks like you did. We also caught bonnet head sharks. And I believe we caught... You caught a stingray. I caught a stingray. We that was cool. Stingray. I caught a stingray. Cool. I wish we caught a stingray. Try it now. Now, instead of letting the shark leave, just keep it right here and reel. And you can you, like pull him where you want him. Don't let him go up there this time. He should be tired enough. There you go. Now reel down. Okay, so he went under the boat. Try to, when he goes under the boat, you want to point your rod down and you want to try to get him back out. There you go, here he comes. Real, real, real. There you go. Do one of you ladies want to give this shark a go? Oh, he's, he's right here. Whoa. Never mind, I spoke too soon. All right. So when I do, <laughs> hold on, look at, oh my god, <laughs> I got it underneath my arm. <laughs> yeah, it was hooked right in the corner of the mouth. I didn't get a chance to. I need to explain the D hooker, but <laughs> nice job. That was awesome. We got our sinker back. That's all that matters. Another important skill that these ladies learned was how to de-hook fish. Because when you're out in the Gulf, or really anywhere, sometimes you'll catch fish that you don't really want to bring in the boat. Maybe it's too small to keep, maybe it's too big, maybe it's a stingray. Or a catfish. Or a catfish. You we definitely don't want to touch a catfish. catfish. So we made sure that they learned how to de-hook fish. So we're going to de-hook this fish. And you can, uh, you can close your bail and reel up a little bit. Show me what you do with the line. There you go. Okay, so there you go. So you take the fishing line, and I like to just do like one wrap with my left hand, but you want to be careful if you have a really big fish on, not to, I mean, if it's a very strong, just be careful, you're gonna take wraps with your hands, basically. Um, but what we do is, all we do is we take the de-hooker, we grab the hook, and we rotate the hook so it's upside down. And usually gravity will do the work for you. Sometimes you gotta give it a shake, but the fish did the shake for me. Jeanette on our boat caught a lane snapper. And when this thing came into the boat, I thought it was a mutton snapper because of how big it is. Lane snappers, commonly in the Gulf, you'll catch them around seven, eight, nine inches, 10 inches. But this thing came in the boat, like 13, 14 inches. That's crazy. I, was, I literally thought it was a undersized mutton snapper. Wow, I didn't see that. I know, we, it was a beautiful fish. I was so excited for that fish. And also what's really funny is Mandy caught a red grouper, which is, she caught one on day one, and then oh, again, no she caught a keeper red grouper on day two. So all day, and she she actually participated in catching that Goliath. Well, she was the grouper queen. Oh, nice! Holy cow! Oh wow! Look at that! That thing. was awesome. This is a lane snapper, and that's a really big lane snapper. Like, nice job. To end the fish camp, we brought them all back to the dock and we taught them how to throw a cast net. So this way they can go home and they can take that skill with them and they can go catch their own bait when they want to go out fishing on their own. Always throw downwind. So I'll probably start, give myself a swing. You want to come back and open the net up. So the whole time, once I swung, I take my right hand, I'm wringing my right hand around my body I'm like basically driving my right shoulder down into the right and my left shoulder almost up into the left. And take your right hand, stretch that all the way and follow with your left shoulder. Yay, that was so good. 
This camp was so successful. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed being a part of our women's fish camp. If you guys want to know about future fish camps that we're hosting, make sure you subscribe to our mailing list, which is galeforcefishing.com forward slash subscribe. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you learned a lot. If there's anything that you want to see in the future one day, go ahead, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching and make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.